new challenger approaching. I guess the boys are coming finally. <laughs> Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. There are people on the floor above me and they are loud as fuck. So I had to delete the first video I made on this one because they were so annoying. I hope they will stop with that soon. In the next three videos, we are going to talk about this integral right here. This improper one from minus infinity to infinity of cosine of x over x squared plus one. And you are going to see that this is going to yield one of the most beautiful results in calculus I've ever seen in my life. So it's going to have a really, really nice answer. And we are going to solve it in three different ways. And I'm going to start off with my most favorite one today. We are going to use Laplace transform on this one. But at first we want to define a time-dependent function. So at first we let some i in terms of t equal to the integral from zero to infinity of so we have the cosine of t times x we are putting the parameter here over x squared plus one dx but you might ask yourself how is this, that integral right here the same as that one well if we let t equal to one we would get the same argument in the cosine here and also you might notice this right here is an even integrand. That means if we plug in minus x into here, we would end up with the original integrand. So we can rewrite that at the integral from zero to infinity, but two times. So that's nice. So you might see a relationship. That means our original i is just two times i in terms of t equals to one. That's our relationship here, and it's going to help us. And now we want to apply the Laplace transform to this time-dependent function. <laughs> so the Laplace transform of i in terms of t. What exactly is that? Well, we know this is just the improper integral from zero to infinity of i in terms of t, e to the minus st dt. Great thing. And now we can plug our definition for i in terms of t in. So what is that? That's the integral from zero to infinity of the integral from zero to infinity of, so we have the cosine of t times x, over x squared plus one. In the normal case, there would be a dx right here, but we are going to interchange the dx and the e to the minus st, because in terms of x, e to the minus st is just a constant, so we can do this. Let's bring it to the inside, e to the minus st, dx, dt. And now we want to do something that makes a lot of subscribers angry. We are going to interchange those integrals without any restrictions. So changing the order of integration. We are going to use Papa Fubini. Wait, can you hear that French music? What is that? New challenger approaching. I guess the boys are coming finally. <laughs> they want to fight me. Oh my goodness, it's Papa Fubini. Some weird Lebec. And also we have the Wikipedia article for the dominated convergence theorem that we would need in the normal case. A new challenger is approaching. Oh boys, that was a close call. <laughs> I guess we have won the fight against those three bad boys. They have invaded us, but we have won. So that means since we've won this fight, we can interchange the integral signs. Whew. I'm so glad we are doing applied maths here so we can just do that without any restrictions. <laughs> so this is now going to be equal to the integral from zero to infinity of the integral from zero to infinity of cosine t times x over x squared plus one times e to the minus st and we've changed the order of integration. So we are going to do the dt first and then the dx. Okay, nice and fine, but what can we do with interchanging the integral signs? Well, you might notice this term right here. So we have this right here and this e to the minus st and also we have this integral sign right here. That's just the Laplace transform of the cosine of t times x. So we can plug this in. So we now have the integral from zero to infinity of one over x squared plus one. So we are leaving that as it is. That's a constant in terms of the Laplace transform times the Laplace transform of the cosine t times x. Um, and this is going to be in terms of s, this Laplace transform. 
create uh, or some other variable, it doesn't matter, dx. Okay, but what's Laplace transform of cosine of t times x? Well, that's quite easy, we've derived this before, so we now have the integral of uh, from 0 to infinity of 1 over x squared plus 1 and we also have s over s squared and then we have plus um, x squared dx. So we've applied Laplace transform, that's quite nice, but we can't easily integrate this right now because we have a product of two fractions which are in terms of x. So what we need to do now is partial fraction decomposition. That's going to be the longer part of the video. It's going to be quite easy to be honest, but we have to do it. So let's do some partial fraction decomposition and we know we have 1 over. So the first factor is x squared plus 1 and the second factor is s squared plus x squared. And we want to make this equal to the sum of two fractions because we have two factors. So we have some a x plus b over x squared plus 1 and we also have some c x plus d over s squared plus x squared. Okay, and now we can multiply both sides by this big denominator because it's not going to be equal to zero. So that also means that one is now equal to, okay, so we have ax plus b times this term because this and that would cancel out. So we have a s squared times x and we also have plus b s squared. Then we have plus b x squared and we have plus ax to the third power. Okay, nice and fine, and now we are going to multiply this denominator by this. This term and this term we cancel out, so we only have cx plus d times x squared plus 1. So this is going to be cx to the third power plus dx squared. Nice, and we have plus cx and plus d. So that's quite a long expression, but we can simplify it now. You might notice the degree of the polynomial on the left side is zero. That means we also need to have a degree of zero on this right side. So all the terms with degree higher than zero will just be zero. Um, that means ax to the third power plus cx to the third power need to equal to zero. We are going to cancel out the x to the third power. That means a plus c is going to be equal to zero. That means a is minus c. So that's quite nice. So we now know that a is equal to minus c. I hope you can see where this comes from. Take a piece of paper and try it out for yourself. So we now simplify it a bit. So we have as squared times x plus bs squared plus bx squared plus, so this and that cancelled out, so we have plus dx squared plus, okay, cx will be minus ax plus d. Okay, what else can we do? Well, this is an s right here. You might notice this and that is the same case just like before. This has x squared, we are going to cancel out the x squared. b plus d need to equal to zero, that means b is minus d. b equals to minus d, nice and fine. So we can plug this in, so we have a s squared x and plus. Um, this and that went away, so we have b s squared right here and minus a x minus b. I plugged in the condition right here. Okay, so now we have this term right here and this needs to equal to zero because it has a degree of one. So let's put it here. So we now have a s squared x minus a x need to equal to zero. This and that we cancel out those x's. We need to factor out the a and you might notice this factor s squared minus one can be equal to zero. That's our condition. So that means a needs to be zero. And since minus c is a, then c needs also to be zero. Okay, nice and fine. So this and that also cancels out. So we now know that one is going to be equal to b s squared minus b, and this is just, we factor out the b. So this is s squared minus one, dividing both sides by s squared minus one, because this isn't equal to zero. So that means b is going to be one over s squared minus one, and we know what d is. d is just minus b. So that means that d is minus 1 over s squared minus 1. We can now plug everything in we found out and then we are nearly done. As you might see, I've plugged everything in. So that was our original expression. I brought this s to the outside using the linearity of the integral and now we have this expression right here. We can 
bring this common factor to the outside too, 1 over s squared minus 1. So we have that on both terms and also we can use the linearity of the integral to break this up into two integrals. So let's conclude that. We now have s over s squared minus 1. Okay, that's the first part. And then times. So at first we have the integral from 0 to infinity of dx over x squared plus 1. Okay, that's the first part. And then minus the integral from 0 to infinity of dx over x squared plus s squared. Okay, and we know how to integrate those. Those are really easy to integrate. So we have this common factor and also this first integral is just the inverse tangent of x from 0 to infinity minus, okay, and now we have the inverse tangent of and we are going to have x over s and don't forget the 1 over s factor right here. So this is minus 1 over s times this term and then from 0 to infinity. Inverse tension of zero is always going to be zero, so that's nice and fine. And also if we plug in infinity into here, that would mean that we would get an answer of pi over two. So this right here is pi over two, and this right here is just pi over two. Okay, great thing. Now we can um, plug everything in. <laughs> Sometimes I forget to clean the other chalkboard and then I have to make a cut because I'm noticing that I don't have enough space. Never mind that. We've d got this expression right here. Okay, and now we want to distribute everything into everything. So at first we have s over s squared minus 1 times pi over 2 and then minus this s and this s we cancel out. So we have pi over 2 and also we have 1 over s squared minus 1. Okay, great. And what we want to do now, we want to get back to i in terms of t. That means we need to use the inverse Laplace transform of the Laplace transform of i in terms of t. So let's do this now. So we have the inverse Laplace transform of the Laplace transform of i in terms of t. Well, what is that? That's nothing else than i in terms of t. And what is that? So we have a common factor. We have pi over 2. So we can bring this to the outside using the linearity of the inverse Laplace transform. So that's the first thing. And now we have the sum of something into an uh, inner inverse Laplace transform. That means we can make it into the sum of inverse Laplace transforms. So at first we have the inverse Laplace transform of s over s squared minus 1. That's hard to pronounce, inverse Laplace transform. And also we have the inverse Laplace transform, so minus inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared minus 1. Okay, great. But what are those? Well, this is just the hyperbolic cosine of t and this right here is the hyperbolic sine of t. So right now i in terms of t is nothing else than pi over 2 and then we have the hyperbolic cosine of t minus the hyperbolic sine of t. Okay, but what are those? We can use the definition of those in terms of an exponential function. So we have e to the t plus e to the minus t over 2 and then minus e to the t minus e to the minus t over 2. We have a minus right here. That means this and that we cancel out. We are having a positive sign right here and a positive sign right here because of this minus. So we have 2 times e to the minus t over 2. So this is just e to the minus t. So what we end up with is just pi over 2 times e to the t. That's what we would end up with. But we are not done yet because, don't forget, this condition here holds. That, mean, that means in order for us to get back to our original i, we need to make t equal to 1 and we have to multiply it by 2. So we have 2 times pi over 2 times e to the first power, which is, which is just pi over e. And then we are done. So as you might notice, that's the result of our original i. And that's quite a beautiful result, pi over e. I don't know if you get this result from any other integral, but that's just absolutely amazing. Our two most favorite transcendental boy. <laughs> I'm always forgetting the S. Never mind. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And I hope you are going to look forward to the next two videos regarding this integral. And well, if you want to support me a bit more, link to my Patreon will be in the description. I'm doing all this stuff for free, so if you feel like supporting me a bit, then feel free to spend at least a buck.
on me doing those videos. And well, up until the next video, have fun the day. See ya. We are spending our weekend at the Hox Horse Sea. It's quite nice here. Yeah. Right there should be a fountain, but it's turned off right now, I don't know why. And behind us there's another building. And just a fun fact, my university is um, right next to this place too. So this whole castle, Schloss Sanssouci, has been turned into, un into a university, so that's quite nice.